Today you're gonna see a tour of our backyard tropical fruit orchard. Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Melanie and on my channel, Our Tropical Soil, I talk about growing food in the tropics. We have some trees that aren't fruits like, for example, this oak tree and some things that are like tubers, like the malanga right there. So I'm just gonna be showing you our fruit trees or like fruiting plants. Here we have some pineapple plants that haven't produced yet, they're young. They were grown from like regular pineapple store tops. And then we have one Barbados cherry tree and a second one, both grown from seed. And it's also known as the Acerola cherry. I think that's how it's pronounced. Right here we have a key lime tree that we bought. It's a grafted tree and it doesn't really produce that well. Citrus overall has not done very well for us, but we do have one little key lime in here. You can see it. And it's also blooming, so maybe we'll get a couple more key limes. But overall, the tree is not that happy. Here we have a sugar apple tree grown from seed. And then back here we have all of our trees just planted in their individual holes whereas over here we had like a nice bed so this is an avocado tree that was grown from seed it's probably like 10 years old at least but it doesn't produce that much it puts out a bunch of flowers sets a bunch of fruit but most of them fall off and then we just get like two or three avocados off of it in any year. This is a mame tree grown from seed and this one is a grafted one. Everything back here has a lot of wind. There's just a lot of wind coming through here so I think that's why a lot of times these trees are not doing too well because there's just way too much wind. This is our grafted tree that hasn't produced yet. It has flowered, but not produced. And again, they don't look too happy because of the wind. Here is a canistead, also known as egg fruit, that I grew from seed. So hopefully it'll produce in a few years. Right here we have one sugar apple and a second sugar apple, both grown from seed. These have flowered, but they haven't produced yet. Here is the second one. This right here is Anona reticulata, also known as custard apple. And again, this one was grown from seed. So the Anona species, like this Anona reticulata and the sugar apple, which is Anona squamosa, can be grown from seed and they'll produce pretty fast in about three years. This is an avocado tree that we bought. It's grafted and it's the Catalina variety. So it produces these big creamy avocados and it has flowered yet and set some really small fruit but they fell so hopefully this grafted tree will produce more avocados than the one we already had that's grown from seed this is a seed grown caimito tree also known as star apple and it produces these like round fruit that you cut open and they're sort of like jelly like this is the purple variety not the green one and the bottom of the leaves are golden we have two soursop trees planted back here this is the first one and the second one's over there these were planted when they were so small about a year ago and they haven't flowered yet they are grown from seeds so they'll probably take maybe like two more years i'd say this tree is like around two or three years old here is the second one they did get a little bit of cold damage last winter because we had like a freakish really cold couple nights that I think they went down into the 30s so I did protect it with like a blanket and a bucket of water to try to regulate the temperature but it did lose its leaves but it came back and it's fine. This is an ice cream bean tree also known as an Inga. I'm not exactly sure how that's pronounced. I'll put it here on the screen. and. It dried up because we transplanted it, 
but it it came back, so it'll regrow. But yeah, these produce really fast, and they're also really good for chop and drop. This is a seed-grown white sepulte tree, and it has a little bit of fungal issue because it had aphids, but it took off the aphids, so the fungal issue should clear up. But again, also grown from seed. I think they take about maybe five years to produce, maybe more. I'm not exactly sure. And this is a black sapote tree that was grown from seed. I'd say it's like two years old, approaching three maybe. The black sapote is also known as a chocolate pudding fruit because you let it ripen up and it gets really, really black and creamy and mildly sweet. And right here we have one coconut tree and a second coconut tree. And these are just planted from sprouted coconuts. We have five mango trees and this is a seed grown mango tree. It produced for the first time this past summer, but the mangoes weren't all that great. So we might top work it, which is like when you cut it and then you graft onto like the new growth. So you could get a tree that you like the mangoes from. This is a young tamarind tree, also grown from seed. If you haven't noticed, I like growing things from seed. It's pretty fun to see them grow so much. This is another mango tree, and it's the Hades variety. And it produced also for the first time this year. And it's planted next to this mango tree, which is our oldest mango tree. I'd say it's at least 10 years. Probably more, maybe like 15. And it's also the Hades variety. And it stopped producing so much, it used to produce more. So we need to cut it back a bit, we need to prune it so it could get more vigorous and produce some more mangoes for us every year. This is the wax jambu. I believe it's called, in Spanish it's called Puma Rosa, but it has these red juicy fruit. And it has a severe deficiency that I need to take care of. Puma Rosa was also grown from seed. Right here we have our guava tree that has been producing for a couple years, maybe like four or five years. It's flowering right now and fruiting. During the winter it's a bit slow and there's not that many things that are fruiting. But the guavas is one of the few that fruits multiple times a year. And so we have this one that was grown from seed. So here is the big guava tree we have. And the little guava tree we planted recently. Probably about two years old. So it'll produce pretty fast. The guava produces pretty fast. And it was grown from seed also. Seed from this guava tree. Here is one of our two Glen mango varieties. So this one is a bit younger than that one over there, but they both produce a lot of fruit. Here's the Glen Mango one. And it's planted next to the guava. Here is my Mysore Raspberry Bush. It hasn't produced yet. It's grown from a cutting, so it should fruit in its next fruiting season. It has grown a lot. We planted it. And it was just a thin little plant with barely any leaves. And it has grown a lot. So we're expecting fruit soon. And here's a June plum tree that I grew from seed. These trees produce like in their first year after growing from seed. But the fruit aren't looking too good. They're like, so they have like a fungal thing. I don't know, but I mainly wanted to grow it for its leaves. You can eat the leaves and they're nice and sour. So that's the main reason I planted it. Here is a noni tree, also grown from seed. And these produce really fast. I don't really like the fruit, but my dog loves it. So that's why I planted one. Here's a papaya tree. We have a couple papayas planted, but none of them really produce good papayas. They get severely affected by anthracnose. We have like three beds and then the rest is just individual trees planted in holes. So here's our first bed. 
our second bed and our third bed is back there. So here we have a sugar apple tree and it has flower grown from seed, a loquat tree that's grafted and an everberry mulberry tree. In here, the two other fruit trees we have are two coconut trees that we sprouted ourselves. We just put the coconuts there and they started growing. And we need to transplant these out of here because they can't grow here. There's no space for them. This sugar apple tree has never produced before. It has flowered and it actually has a fruit. It's first fruit. It's not even the season right now, but it's pretty cool that we have a fruit. So, I mean, it's pretty big. It should grow completely and ripen up. I don't see why it wouldn't. But yeah, it's exciting because we wouldn't be getting sugar apples for a really long time. But we have this one. Our loquat tree is flowering and it produced fruit last year. It is a grafted tree. And the fruit were kind of sour, but they were pretty good. I am hoping that we'll get a lot this year and I could make some jam out of it. We planted it behind the house because since the foliage is so dense and it's evergreen, it'll really give a lot of shade to our terrace. Our ever-bearing mulberry tree, we planted as a little stick. It was almost dead and it came back and it produces pretty much all year long. It'll have some fruit, sometimes more than others. The fruit are small, but I mean, it's something. It's fun to come pick them because they're nice and sweet. Here's one. They first start out like all red and white and then they start ripening black and get really sweet. When they're like this, they're pretty sour. Here's our third bed and the plants here are doing great and I think it's because there's less winds. So we have a star fruit tree and I planted this little thing. It was probably like a foot tall and now I'd say it's like maybe five and a half feet tall. So it has grown a lot and it'll probably produce in the next year or two because they produce really fast. Here's our papaya tree. It was a volunteer papaya and it has these beautiful red stems and I've never seen it. And the fruit also look really nice. So who knows, maybe we'll finally get a papaya that is a bit more resistant to anthracnose. This right here is another Anona reticulata, also known as the custard apple. And it has grown a lot. I planted it, it was probably less than a foot tall, and now it's like six feet tall. And this was less than a year that it grew this much. So I'm pretty impressed with how much it has grown. I thought it was not doing well at all when I planted it and it just seemed that it needed to lose its sleeves and put out some new growth because the Anona species, some of them do become slightly dormant in the winter and they lose some of their leaves. Here we have a Gachucha pepper. I have multiple of these planted around and they're perennials and they produce a lot of little seasoning peppers. This little guy is a gambouge that I did plant from seed and I haven't had much luck with either two of these trees that I have. I have one in a pot and then this one that I planted and I just said, well, I'm gonna plant it and see how it does. So it's not terribly happy. They seem to like the shade more, but it does get some afternoon shade from this Malanga right here because the west is that way, so I got some shade. Here is a papaya tree that we planted and it's loaded with papayas and it actually is like this variety where the stems are long. We haven't grown any like these before, but it doesn't look too good because it has like these spots on it. So I think it might have some kind of virus or disease, I'm not sure, but I'm not counting on it producing too well. Here is our sugar apple tree that we've had that was grown from seed and it's been producing for a couple years now. Produced a lot of fruit. Unfortunately, with the last tropical storm that we had, it fell over and we tried to prop it back up, but it didn't do too well. It's like pretty much dried up, but thankfully we have another one that will be probably producing next year at least a couple sugar apples. Here is the side of the house where I have my annual beds, but I do have some fruit growing in here. This is our soursop tree. 
it's pretty tall probably like 20 feet maybe more and it hasn't produced that many sour sops maybe like five or six but it is loaded with flowers so hopefully we'll get a couple sour sops next season and this was actually planted here before I did the annual gardens. It is affected by aphids. If you can see that green dot on the flower right there, that's an aphid. And there's like baby ones all over too. So we've been spraying it with the hose and it does get rid of the aphids, but they come back over time because there's like ants that are farming them. And there are things that you can put around the base of the plant. So, like you wrap it around the trunk and you put the sticky material on it so the ants can't crawl up the tree but I don't really want to do that because it's so humid here that I feel like it might get some fungal problems from having that stuck on its trunk for so long we put some diatomaceous earth around the base of the plant to hopefully get rid of some of the ants but I don't know if that's gonna do anything. It is pretty difficult to spray the plant with anything, even with the hose, cause it is so tall. And I'm sure there's like aphids up in the top of the tree too. Also in here, I have an oak tree up there. Right there's the oak tree and we have bananas and there's one, two, three racks from this banana mat. And then we have some plantains here. So that's, pretty much all the stuff we have that's fruiting in the backyard so here I had a food forest planted I just left this little section as a food forest the rest I turn into annual beds and you can watch a video of how that looked before by clicking the link that I'm gonna leave right here so thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video